Welcome back to the Torque Test channel. This is another one of our Force Science episodes, which have on occasion been the type where we play with things that might kill us, but in the pursuit of fun, I mean science, often accidentally learning something along the way. So join us today as we do a bit more of that with plenty of successes and fails. Stay tuned for that. Harrison Hobbies, an up and coming YouTuber, after playing around with converting a Lenovo power brick to power his Milwaukee tools, took the plunge into the deeper waters of higher wattage and sourced a big boy power supply to get all the juice out of his red tools without a battery. That is by sourcing the 120 volt we all have easy access to at the wall and converting it to 18 plus volts of pixie power, hopefully with plenty of amps as well in the process. Things could be getting crazy. Keep our fire extinguisher right here. Uh, here we go, for anyone curious. 18.2 volt on here. So uh, I think we are ready for some science. So let's just do a couple of cuts. That's the flavor of silly science we're into and he was nice enough to loan it to us. So today we take this abomination to the brink of its capabilities with various sizes of Milwaukee M18 impacts and see if 120 volts from the wall is enough to move the needle on these 18 volt tools compared to their existing battery options. So essentially Mr. Harrison cracked open a no name make believe Milwaukee battery pack and hardlined some wires into this here 120 volt to 18 volt transformer tripling up on the power and ground cables to try and max this thing out in the wattage department. This box has a voltage adjustment potentiometer screw, which let's face it, we're just gonna turn up to 11, which appears to be about 20 volts. Only a nearly dead M18 battery is about 18 volts, closer to 20 volts or just above that when charged, but slumping down to 18, 17, 16, or even lower when under load. Hence the 20 volt max you see from brands like DeWalt. But that's the idea at play here today. Batteries, even large ones, may start at one voltage and in actual use deliver another under sustained load. Brian over at Workshop Addict has a great series he's doing on just this, measuring the voltage level during different tasks using different batteries. For instance, a standard vanilla 5 amp hour XC 5.0 drilling a 1 inch hole drops to 17 volt, but a 3 and 5 eighths inch hole it drops to 15 volts. Smaller batteries get even worse, larger batteries and larger cells do a bit better. Head on over there with the link below to check out that and from brands like DeWalt as well. We've shown before that larger batteries and particularly larger cell containing batteries with higher discharge rates like 21700 cells can make a bigger splash when it comes to your impact wrench. Sometimes that's less of a difference than others due to the brand's choice of cells or the tool already being maxed out as it were but we have seen examples where one battery might have a discharge rate advantage over a larger one, but over the course of a longer run, that higher capacity battery still making higher numbers. This isn't always the case, but in times where it is, we theorize voltage sag played more of a part on those particular tools. The load from the tool causing the batteries to drop in voltage, but on higher capacity batteries, theoretically less so. Today, we get to see what minimal voltage sag across a long run really does as far as power goes. The 20 volts from this thing being backed up by 120 at the wall, sustaining that theoretically much better, at least up to its wattage limit. To see that, we're starting out the M18 Gen 2 mid-torque. You're looking at its original baseline best case scenario run, aka its battery freshly charged. Flash forward to today and it's still making a healthy 452 foot-pounds as shown here. I mean, usually, sometimes this thing acts like it's in mode two lately, but that's a discussion for another day. Now here's the mid-torque plugged into the Harrison Hobby's House of Horrors. After very brief impacting, the hacked up imposter battery sort of slides right off. I guess that's to be expected when the release tabs are deleted. Here's trying it again, but just holding that battery pack on by hand. And still no luck. So time to employ some Milwaukee Fuel approved color correct red gaffer tape to hold this sucker on. And fast forward a bit, it does work, but the connector just gets rattled off. So some more tape on the cable connector and we're ready to go. Here's a full power run from the mid-torque with the help of the plug-in horror house. Ooh. 
484, not bad at all. I'll be honest, there were some doubts among us that this power box would even move the needle. We figured that the gains, if any, from this would be around the end, where the battery voltage might be worse from working longer and now facing even tighter stuff, but so far seems to be in the middle. It's interesting. We'll circle back in a bit to see this versus an HD 12.0. Our next contender is the 2767 High Torque. This should represent a bit larger current draw and therefore more voltage sag. Let's find out. Here's this original BCS run. And here is the OSHA no-no box plugged into it. Eight twenty six, not bad. A noticeable increase in Uggadugas felt at the wrist, too and a sort of warm, fresh plastic smell coming off this thing now, which is new. The sketch factor on this House of Horrors box is off the charts, and we're just getting started. Sketchy fact number one, when you plug this thing in to an impact, the lights come on every time without touching the gun. That's fun. Sketchy fact number two, if your shirt touches the screws on the back of this gun during a power run, the whole thing cuts out. Not during free spinning, but under load only. We thought the gun or the power transformer let the smoke out initially, but no, a hard reset, and she's good to go again. Sketchy fact number three, if you aren't wearing rubber-coated gloves, this whole apparatus again cuts out when under high load. Like the user is acting as some type of live ground? That shouldn't be. No tingles felt either, it's sketchtastic though. Sketchy fact number four, once this thing cuts out from such electrical threats as a cotton shirt brushing up against it, after unplugging it, it comes back online while unplugged like a delayed capacitor deciding she's ready to become an electrical zombie. Real confidence inspiring. So yeah, basically seeing that, let's plug it into our $1,000 M18 one inch impact. Sounds legit. And no beating around the bush. This is the fail portion of the video. The 1200 watt max transformer is able to adequately supply this one inch in power modes one, and two. But yeah, three and higher, not gonna happen. Max mode four sees almost no Uggadugas. Harrison Hobbies currently doesn't have any plans to make another bigger one of these, but I mean, come on, wouldn't you wanna see what 1500 watt box, maybe bigger cables connectors can do? Heck, maybe not even a 18 volt one, something like a 24 volt model that can be turned down to 21 to 22 volts then over voltage these bad boys and see what beans we can get or if bad things happen. We'd be happy to supply the parts for that effort, so head over to his channel in the links below and tell him yourself that you want to see it. Up until now, we haven't been putting Milwaukee's best stuff up against this wall power source, so let's see some HD 12.0 action. Looking at the power curve here of the mid-torque, it's clear that the copious 21700 cells in the HD 12.0 are bringing some serious out-the-gate discharge rate that by our math should be outpacing even a 1500 watt wall plug anyways, so it makes some sense. But ultimately, somehow, for reasons we don't know, the transformer is making some better numbers in the middle again, we just find that sort of interesting. And here's the high torque. The discharge rate of the HD 12.0 is more sharply apparent here, but also not sustained long. The wall box just making those gains again in the middle even compared to that massive HD 12.0 battery. This goes counter to our experience a bit with the Metabo HBT corded adapter that on average made less power when plugged in, but I imagine the less legit nature of this House of Horrors box may be sending some of that current unregulated as much as it can could play a part in that, we don't really know. But curious as to your thoughts and we want to hear how you might improve this and make a non-deadly but more powerful version for Harrison Hobbies to make next since we don't want to steal his video series. Appreciate you joining us for this one. Click subscribe to see the next one. And thanks as always for watching.